There has been a debate going on in the Emacs community for a few months now that Emacs really lags behind so many other text editors in popularity, despite the fact that Emacs is such a fantastic and unique piece of software, maybe one of the most powerful pieces of software ever designed. Why isn't Emacs more popular? Why does Vim, for example, probably have 10 times the users that Emacs does? And, and I'm certain that Vim probably does have at least 10 times the users of Emacs. Why is that? Why do text editors like VS Code and Sublime Text probably have 100 times the users of Emacs? And th this has been brought up within the Emacs community, and they're starting to debate it. And they're wondering, is it time to maybe make some changes with Emacs, redesign a few things, maybe think about coming out with better defaults, something that's more attractive, more appealing to the new user, more appealing to the masses. So what got me thinking about this today was I came across this article over at LWN.net. This is by Jonathan Corbett. He mentions that the Emacs community is starting to go over this discussion again. And the reason he says again is because, again, this has been going on for a few months because originally back in May, there was a thread started within the Emacs community about some of the defaults and maybe changing some things to, again, bring Emacs, I guess, into the 21st century to make it more modern. When we talk about making it look more modern, let me switch to the desktop here, and I'm going to launch a terminal. I'm going to launch Emacs with just a plain vanilla configuration. This is what Emacs looks like out of the box. You know, just a white background and some dark text. It's usually black text. Uh, the comments are red. And, you know, these icons, these are not the default icons. I'm using the breeze icon set. The default icons are actually quite unattractive, though, in vanilla Emacs. Uh, you do have a menu system that's very confusing because it tries to cover most everything you could possibly do in Emacs, which there's a ton of stuff you can do in Emacs and infinite possibilities. And it's just tough. And then to get any kind of help for information, if you read at the bottom, it looks like I could type this particular key cord to get some help information about how to use a GNU Emacs. It's just, it's not meant to be for the masses, right? This is something for power users. Emacs is supposed to be a blank canvas. It's basically an ELISP environment where you have to write a config file in ELISP. You have to write your own text editor. So it's extremely powerful, but it's for the extreme power user. It's not really meant for everybody. Some people within the Emacs community have put forth these questions like, well, maybe it's the UI that's the problem. For one thing, that blinding white background, most modern text editors now ship with a dark mode, usually on by default, but if it's not default, they at least have a very easy dark mode to get to very quickly. Some people have mentioned uh, licensing issues as far as people contributing to Emacs, maybe holding it back. Some people have mentioned things like uh, more default plugins, plugins that are enabled by default. Some people have mentioned that, hey, the key bindings, the key chords for Emacs are not what most people expect, and that's holding it back. When somebody that's used to other text editors, especially other text editors in Microsoft Windows, for example, they first launch Emacs and want to do a copy and paste, Control C does not copy. Control V does not paste. And some people have put forth that, hey, just changing those key bindings, the copy and paste key bindings, could attract more users to Emacs. Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with that. The other thing, the problem with that is why would Emacs, which is 40 years old, this piece of software is actually 40 years, more than 40 years old, it dates back. And why would Emacs change its key bindings to mimic what the newer text editors are doing? Why didn't the new text editors use the key bindings that Emacs has been using all along? Why does Emacs need to change to, to their key bindings? Uh, so I don't, I don't think it's a key binding problem. I think the idea that Emacs not having a modern interface, quote, modern <laughs> interface, that that's holding it back, I don't know. Because Vim doesn't have a modern interface. Vim is not a GUI application at all, Vim. so it obviously doesn't have a modern interface. You have to run Vim in the terminal, so definitely not a modern interface. Vim probably has 10 times the users as Emacs, so the interface, you know, not being modern, that's not holding Vim back, so I don't think it's holding Emacs back either, so I, I'm not one of those that think, you know, just redesigning Emacs, making everything look pretty 
is all of a sudden going to make people use it. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem here is that not every piece of software is meant to be popular. Uh, why do people think that every piece of software out there has to be popular? It has to be new user friendly. It has to be easy to get into. That, who, who made that decision? Because Emacs, again, is, is this strange beast because of how it's set up. It's a completely blank canvas. There's nothing to it at all by default. You have to program your own piece of software, your own text editor. It doesn't even have to be a text editor. You can do anything inside of Emacs, whatever you write in Ellipse, whatever you make Emacs do for you, you can make it happen. But that's not new user friendly, right? <laughs> Writing your own piece of software is not new user friendly and it never will be. But that's OK. That's not what Emacs is about. You know, it's a piece of software that requires some technical knowledge, some mastery. And you can't dumb that down. You have to have all of this knowledge to make Emacs do what you want to do for you. But you can't just give that knowledge to people. You just can't give it to them for free, right? They have to invest the time into it. And nothing is given to you. You have to earn it, really. And I know that sounds kind of snobbish, <laughs> elitist, but that's the way some things are. I think that's the way things are with Emacs. That's the way other pieces of software are like this, too. Vim is very much like this as well. It's not just an Emacs problem. I mean, Vim is more popular than an Emacs, but I think the reason Vim is more popular than Emacs is because Vim is already on most Unix-like operating systems anyway. Vim is already there, so more people kind of fall into Vim, where Emacs is usually not a default already installed. But Vim is not easy to get into. I don't think Linux. Well, let's talk about this. I don't think the Linux operating system, good news slash Linux, I don't think that's easy to get into. And a lot of people have this same exact debate with Linux. We need to dumb it down. We need to make the install, you know, super simple. And then when the user interface comes up, you know, the desktop environment, it needs to be dumbed down. Don't give people a whole lot of options, just a few big buttons on the screen. <laughs> you know, think the GNOME interface, you know, that's, that's what we need to give to people because if you give them too much power to do what they want to do, you know, it will scare them away. It'll scare the noob away and he'll go back to Windows. And maybe they're right. But is that such a bad thing? I mean, I want Linux to be more popular. I want free software to be more popular. But not every piece of free software is meant to be popular. And if Linux, all it ever has is that this 2 to 3% market share that we currently have, that's okay. That's, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean Linux is bad, that it's a bad piece of software. It just means Linux has two to 3% of the desktop market share. That's all that means. I don't want to ever see pieces of software like Linux or Vim, or in this case, Emacs, ever fundamentally change what they're doing to appeal to users that probably are not going to use that software anyway, no matter the changes they make. And if you dumb it down to the point where some of these users would use that piece of software, all the users that used to use your software are simply going to leave you. So I, I don't think that the Emacs community, I don't understand why they're debating this. There's nothing wrong with Emacs. It's been going on for more than four decades. Emacs will probably be around another four decades. Why does it need to be popular? I understand you want your pieces of, of software that you love and that you use on a daily basis to always be there. But I don't think Emacs is in any danger of development ever ceasing. There's too many people involved in it. And just because it's not as popular as VS Code, what does that matter? You know, it's not a I, there's too much tribalism when it comes to these pieces of software. I don't care how many people I don't care if I'm the only person left on the planet using Emacs, I'll still use Emacs. The same thing with Linux. I don't care if it has 2% market share, 20% market share, or if just a couple hundred people <laughs> use it. You know, if it, I'm going to use it. It's what I like. It's what I'm going to use. Too many people get wrapped up in the numbers. Now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch5530, Akami, Chuck, Claudio, Dylan, George, Kell of Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of the show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. 
If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.